morning, welcome back to another episode. The last time we spoke of what to take note of while purchasing a HDB in the resale market. And in this episode, we will continue with what to take note of while selling your HDB in the resale market. Being a seller is trickier because now you are looking to sell and possibly to buy your next dream home. And that means you have more steps to do and more things to be concerned with. And from what I understand, most of the sellers out there have one big concern. What do I buy next? So again, I'm dividing this video into three parts. Research and planning, marketing and viewing, negotiation and alternative accommodation. So firstly, before you even advertise your unit anywhere, do a proper research. It is of course wiser to connect with a property agent and work through your options, like your preferences, your requirements, if you want to move or relocate closer to a certain primary school for your children's sake, or if you want to move closer to care for your elderly parents or in-laws. Closer to your workplace, a bigger unit, a smaller unit. Basically, at this stage, it is to help you identify the reason for sale and understand in depth as to where you should move next. For planning, there will be two main forms of planning, financial planning and timeline planning. Financial planning is crucial because you need to understand how much roughly are you able to sell your house for. And with that indication, how much sales proceed will you make out of it and how much returning CPF can you use for the next housing. It gets trickier if you are above 55. For example, some of the remaining CPF might be locked in the retirement account to form the full retirement sum or basic retirement sum. So it is important to get all this checked before you proceed further. The last thing you want to do is to sell your flat and then have a portion of your CPF locked in and you can't afford another housing. Once you are clear with the amount of sales proceed and usable CPF, next, you should quickly or concurrently get your HFE, HDB flat eligibility done. If you are looking at purchasing another HDB or IPA in principle approval done with a banker if you are looking to get a private housing next. With this, you should be able to get a firm budget range. Next, for timeline planning, this is extremely important if you are doing a sell and buy because you will need to time it accurately so that your CPF and cash proceeds can come back in time for your purchasing end. And even with that, you can still stay at your current place until your new place is ready. There are many ways to plan for a sell and buy. You might have heard terms like contra, back-to-back -back planning, dragging of submission or resale app, or even the introduction of bridging loan, etc. For this segment, I strongly recommend for you to work with a professional so you can explore scenarios like buying your ideal property first with ABSD and then claiming it back or buying a property first and then sell your current property within 6 months or understand if you should call for an extension of stay etc. And all these are really situational. Reach out to me if you need any assistance on this. After you understand in more detail on your financial and timeline planning, it is then time for you to kickstart the process of sale. For HDB, you will need to do the intent to sell. And once that is approved, you will have to wait at least 7 days, which is the cooling period, before you can issue out your OTP to your buyers. Of course, you can only do the intent to sell after your MOP period, which is the minimum occupation period. For sellers that are keen to sell right at the 5th year mark, do take note. If you have previously granted your ex-owners or sellers an extension of stay, the MOP of 5 years will only start clocking in after the extension of stay, which can be up to 3 months. So do check in with your branch office if you have forgotten how long the extension of stay you have granted your ex-owners. After all this planning, it is finally time to market your place through property portals, social media, website, property agents' internal platform, traditional media, door knocks, etc. And typically, a property agent will cover the photo shoot, the video walkthrough, home tour, 360 virtual tour, ID rendering or proposal, and home staging. Of course, depending on what is necessary for the unit that we are marketing. With that, your property agent will typically conduct viewing on a weekly basis. For me, I normally like to use this technique for viewing called the creating artificial demand you can find out more directly from me. And concurrently, while marketing your property, it is important for you to scout and view properties for your purchase site, which you can refer to my previous video on what to take note of while purchasing a unit. Finally, after you have received a solid offer, it is time to sit down again with your property agent to go through the timeline before accepting any offer and understand if you will need to ask for an extension of stay or a later submission period or even to have an alternative accommodation plan. 
I hope this video gives you a good generic skeleton of flow for selling your property. If you need a step-by-step -step guidance, please reach out. I'll be more than able to assist you with this. At the end of the day, many owners are not taking this first step to sell because they are unaware of the flow of sale and unsure of where to buy next. I'll be happy to share my insights with you. Till then, if you find this video informative, please help to subscribe and share the love. Let's be real. Bye!